everybody. Today we're going to talk about the vocabulary of energy. So the different vocabulary words of how we describe energy when it's in various formats. We're going to talk about how energy can be converted from one form to another called an energy conversion or an energy transformation. All right, so I want to start by talking about mechanical energy. Mechanical energy is associated with the movement and position of everyday objects. So for example, a speeding car, a roller coaster, those are things that have to do with motion. As a beginner working with this vocabulary, if you can just remember mechanical energy as motion, that's a good spot. You can watch this video here, which deals more with how potential and kinetic energy are actually added together to make up mechanical energy. Sound is also technically mechanical energy, and it's a little funny at first because kids think, well, I can't even see sound. How can it be moving? But if you think about that, your vocal cords vibrate to produce sound, and as they vibrate, they make the air right in front of your mouth vibrate, which makes the air here vibrate, which makes the air here vibrate. It goes all the way to the other person's ear and it actually makes the bones in their ear vibrate. And that's how we hear sound. So it definitely has to do with motion. And that's why it is placed into this category of mechanical energy. Thermal. So a lot of times kids think of thermal energy as heat. It is not a bad starting point. Um, certainly, if you look at these examples, hot coffee, a hot light bulb, a hot pan are all examples of thermal energy. However, when you look at that definition, it goes beyond just heat, right? It says the total potential and kinetic energy of the particles in an object. So really, it has to do with how much the atoms are moving, which if you stop and think about it, it makes sense because what makes something hot is that the atoms are moving faster. Okay, one warning, a lot of times my, my students get the word friction kind of confused. They want to either call friction a type of energy, which it's not. It can be a cause of a change in energy. So for example, if you rub your hands together, we're converting mechanical energy of movement into thermal energy. You can feel the heat produced, but why you feel it is because the atoms in your hand are actually vibrating more, okay? So friction can cause energy to change forms from one to another, but it itself is not energy. Okay, chemical energy. This is the energy stored in the chemical bonds between atoms. Common examples are food, fuel, and batteries. So basically anything that we eat in order to get energy, uh, anything that we burn to get energy, like wood and oil and propane, would all be examples of something that has a lot of chemical energy in it. Watch this demo to understand what chemical energy is and how we can know it exists. Today we're going to do a little demo to show that there is energy stored in chemical bonds. So you, right now you can see I have some water and it's at room temperature about 22 degrees Celsius and I have um, some calcium chloride which is sold in stores as a product to melt snow. Uh, it looks like little dipping dots is what my students call it, but they're like, they come in these little pellets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour some calcium chloride into this water and I want you to keep an eye on that thermometer. Do you see what's happening to the thermometer? So where did the energy come from? Obviously we now have some heat being produced. There's thermal energy here, but we started with just a salt, calcium chloride, and water. The energy had to have come from somewhere. So the only logical explanation 
for this change in temperature is that there had to be energy in the chemicals themselves. And when they went through a chemical change, some of that energy was released. All right, electrical energy is the energy associated with electrical charges. So that could be static electricity, it could be electrons flowing in a circuit, could be something like lightning, uh, would all have electrical energy. Electromagnetic energy. These are invisible waves that our eyes can't see, uh, but they carry a lot of energy of it. This is, this is a diagram showing all the different types of electromagnetic energy. We have radio waves that cell phones and TVs and your router all use. We have microwaves, which is what the machine, a microwave was named after, was the type of waves it uses to warm up food. Infrared, that is um, heat energy. Like, um, you ever see those night vision goggles? Usually when you see people like on TV that are like, you're seeing them in, in green and white and red, that is, um, we're looking at infrared. So they put on these special goggles so that they can see the infrared energy coming off a person that's normally invisible to our eyes. Okay, visible light is the part that we can see of the spectrum. Uh, you will see that red wavelengths longer, it has like the waves are farther apart than uh, purple. And then we've got ultraviolet, and that's the like the dangerous rays from the sun that we put sunscreen on to block. X-rays, you guys know what those are. And gamma rays, that's what comes off of like nuclear particles that like nuclear radiation would be in the form of gamma rays. And you need like a three foot concrete wall to stop these where radio waves can clear, obviously you can get a cell phone signal within a building. So they can transfer through a building, no problem. Nuclear energy. There's not very many examples of this because most everyday objects don't use nuclear energy. It's extremely powerful. Um, really, it's just found in the sun, the stars. We do have it on earth in nuclear power plants and there's some submarines that use nuclear power. Um, all this is energy that's stored in the nucleus of the atom. Uh, and it's extremely powerful. And there's a lot of research being done on how we could someday harness that energy a little bit better. Either by fusing atoms together, which is called nuclear fusion. And that's what, that's what stars do. Or nuclear fission, which is breaking apart atoms. All right, we're going to switch to an animation here in a moment. Um, a couple things I want you to notice is that energy is not created or destroyed, and the total number of energy symbols stays the same throughout. Okay, so here we are on a animation produced by FET, and we're going to see a lot of the vocabulary words we just talked about. Nuclear is not listed because nuclear is very, very rarely used unless we're talking about the starting energy of the sun. And we're going to see these symbols being used. Like right now, do you see how this, um, this bike rider, she's got chemical energy in, it, in her. That must mean she's eaten breakfast. So watch what happens. She's gonna use her chemical energy to create movement. So they're showing the chemical energy that's in her body, changing forms into electrical energy. Oh, what was that? That red. That was thermal energy. There must be some friction here in the bike. So some of her starting energy, not all of it is going into the motion of this wheel. Some of it is coming off um, because friction made it turn into thermal energy. Okay. And so we can see here we've got here we've got some um, electrical energy in blue. So there must be a magnet that we're moving here to create some electrical energy. And then we're using that to heat some water. Oh, um, she's hungry. She needs to eat some more so now that she would have the energy to move again. Let's see, um, let's actually do this with a light bulb. All right, let's feed her, give her some more chemical energy. And so it's converting from chemical to mechanical, I'm gonna just follow the same dot. Now it's electrical. 
and now thermal, the wire gets hot, and then the wire is able to release electromagnetic energy in the form of light. We could start with water, which would be mechanical energy, and again, to electrical, to thermal, and then to electromagnetic. We could start with steam, like most power plants do. So we're providing thermal energy to make mechanical energy, to then make electrical energy, and so on. Okay. Um, we don't have to have the end result be electricity. We could have the end result be motion. So maybe we're powering a fan. Okay. But you can see that none of these energy things are just disappearing, right? Because energy can't be created or destroyed. It's all coming from somewhere. In this case, they're not showing it, but there would be some chemical energy of fuel. Uh, probably coming in through this pipe. There's probably propane uh, coming in through the pipe. So they should be showing some chemical energy coming in this way. So energy can't be created, only transferred. And so it's being transferred and you can see that visually with these dots. Let's look at some examples of energy transformations in everyday life. A toaster, for example, is going to start with electrical energy coming in through the plug. And that electrical energy is going to be transferred into two different things. Thermal energy, it's going to get hot. And if you've ever looked inside a toaster, those little bars, they actually glow. And since we can see glowing, we know there must be electromagnetic energy in the form of visible light coming from a toaster. A pencil sharpener has a lot of different mechanical energies. I'm thinking of one of those crank ones. Okay, so um, you start with moving the crank, which is mechanical, and then you're going to see the gears moving inside, which is another form of mechanical energy. Then the blades themselves are going to cut the pencil, again, mechanical energy. And along the way, there's going to be a lot of rubbing, both of gears on gears, as well as the actual cutting against the pencil. There's going to be quite a bit of friction which will cause energy to be transferred into thermal energy. An electric stove, again, they're plugged in. So we start with electrical energy, which is going to be converted into thermal energy. We, that's what really the desired form of energy. And it's also going to be changed into electromagnetic energy in the form of light. Teachers, there's a class kick activity to practice this in the description of the video. Teachers, please consider subscribing. I make a lot of videos that would be helpful for you. And there is a follow-up activity that you can do in the video description.